What's up everybody? Joe here with TDC's Pit Tips. Today we're going to be talking about changing an axle. So go ahead and roll that intro and we'll be right back. Okay, so first step, you're going to remove the wheels. Okay, once you get the wheels off, then you're going to take the hubs off. Once you take the hubs off, then you're going to take the keys out, put them in your parts tray so you can save those for later. Okay, so you're going to want to loosen up the brake hub. First of all, it helps sometimes to loosen up the rotor on the hub and then loosen up the bolts on the brake hub. This is because when it gets tightened down and you have the six or five bolts holding everything together, you loosen those up, it lets everything open up. So you're gonna go ahead and do that and then you're gonna loosen up the bolts on the actual hub itself. So you're gonna do the same thing with the sprocket hub. You're gonna loosen up the six bolts or th three or six bolts depending on, on how you run it around the sprocket hub along with the one or two bolts holding it that's pinching actually down on the axle. So after you loosen all that up, you can go ahead and slide that off. Okay, next up, you're gonna to wanna to remove the set screws. Some people, and I actually used to do this, uh, just loosen up the set screws without actually taking them out. But one time I actually had it where the set screw went in to the axle, like it's supposed to, but it created a divot and it actually pushed in like a little dimple into the axle. So when I pulled it out, it wasn't quite out. And then I tried to hammer the axle through it and it drug that set screw all the way through the axle and damaged the axle. So since then, I just went ahead and removed the set screws. And this way it just really helps, uh, it, first of all, it helps you clean up the holes inside and then you don't have to worry about them dragging along the axle. And you can clean the set screws before you put them back in so that there's no oil or anything else on there as well. Okay, so the next part is gonna be very, very important. And this part is cleaning the axle. You wanna make sure you clean the axle really well. You wanna get all the grease, the dirt, debris, everything off. If you don't have all the dirt and stuff off and you slide the axle out, you're gonna be gouging the axle, you're gonna damage the bearings, it's not gonna be good. So the best thing to do is clean your axle properly. And what I like to use to clean the axle is actually MOC Parts Wash. This stuff right here, this stuff does such an amazing job. It doesn't damage the paint, but it takes off the grease, it's got a lot of pressure in there so it blows all the dirt off. It just does a really good job. They don't pay me to say this, we've just been using this for years. I use it in the shop here, daily. It's just a really good product. And so, you know what, I'm gonna push it. It's a good product. Okay, so one of my favorite things to use to lube up the axle, get the slide out, is WD-40. It's cheap, you can use it anywhere. It does a really good job, and it white cleans off easily. You're gonna wanna spray that around the bearings and then around the brake hub. Don't worry about necessarily getting it on the brake rotor itself. We'll take care of that later, but it does help to get everything sliding out. Okay, so you're gonna wanna get a good hammer to, to start this axle removal. If you don't have a good hammer and it has metal showing through, when you hit the axle, it's gonna dent the axle. And you're gonna have one that looks like this. If you look at this thing, it is all marred up and dented. This is bad. If you do this, if you do that and use a bad hammer, you're gonna dent that. You're gonna have to file that down. If you're lucky, you'll have a die grinder and you can either, you can like shave it down, but it's not gonna be easy to get out. And it's just gonna make your work a lot harder. So check your hammer to make sure there's no metal showing. Okay, so one of the things that I always like to do if I'm working by myself is to get some zip ties and actually zip tie the brake closed. And that way the brake kind of helps hold the rotor to keep it from twisting. And when I'm hitting it out, I'll actually, push in the opposite direction that I'm hitting. So if I'm, if I'm hitting on the brake side, I'm gonna push the other way, just so it keeps the rotor from twisting. So I'm gonna be holding that, I'm gonna hit one end and let it start sliding out. So make sure that you zip, uh, zip tie the brake rotor 
or have somebody help hold the brake. And if you have somebody holding the brake, then when you get the axle to slide out, it's not gonna drop down, hit the ground and damage your rotor. Okay, so after you check your hammer and it's good, we're gonna go ahead and take that axle out. So you're gonna wanna start tapping it, tapping it, and, and if everything's right, and you've done this right and back and forth, and it's not bent, the axle should slide out. If it slides out, that's great. If not, TDC has a part for you. This right here is the TDC axle pusher. So this goes over the end of the axle. This goes over the end of the axle like so. When you hit this, because this is aluminum, it's not gonna mess this up right here. Once you have it into the bearing, this is when this really helps out. If it, if it kind of binds or anything in the bearing, then go ahead and slide this in there and you can actually, this is long enough to tap all the way through. Push it through the bearing, through the brake hub, if, that's, if, if it needs it. But this thing really comes in handy and it's a great tool. One thing to note is that if you do have any burrs on the axle, you wanna go ahead and get a file and file those burrs down where the keys went. So just double check that, run your finger over it if it's pretty bad when you just move it out. Just go ahead and file it down a little bit, won't take much time, and then it stays nice and clean. And then once you do that, make sure you wipe off any of the little metal residue and then re-WD-40 the axle. Okay, so once you have the axle out, there's a great time to clean around the bearings. You wanna clean around the inside of the bearings, underneath the bearings, the brake rotor, just the places that's really hard to get to with the axle in. Go ahead and clean that up. You know, it just, it takes a little bit of time, but it, it goes a long way when it comes to keeping your go-kart clean. So go ahead and just wipe everything down and then run your fingers through the bearings, make sure there's nothing damaged inside there, make sure it's nice and clean, so that when you put the axle back in, everything slides in, everything's good. Okay, so when you're sliding the axle back in, if you have the time, a good thing to do is to make sure that the bearings are aligned. So you wanna slide the axle through the, through the first bearing, and then if you have the third bearing, slide it through the third bearing as well, and just make sure that it lines up with the brake side bearing. If it lines up with the brake side bearing, it's gonna slide all the way through really nice, it's not gonna bind, it's gonna be a good. If you need to, adjust the bearings. Uh, you can stick the axle into one end, and then just kind of move it around until it, the axle is straight inside the bearing. And once it goes bearing to bearing, it should slide through easily. Okay, so once the bearings are in line, then you're gonna to wanna to take the axle and slide it through the sprocket side all the way through the third bearing. And then at that point, you wanna make sure you don't forget these little guys. These are water pump belts if you're running an external water pump. Uh, if you're not running an external water pump, then don't worry about it. But these are one of those things that always, you know, is one of those things that I've definitely put an axle in without putting them in there. Luckily, TDC has these water pump belts that just hook together. The metal clasp, they work really well. So if you're tired of forgetting that, or you wanted to do ones that you don't have to remove the axle to change them, these ones right here. Okay, so once you have your water pump belts on, then you wanna to wanna to slide the axle through the brake hub and then into the last bearing. Make sure that you put the key in the brake rotor. Once the axle's in there, then you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and center it. So one of the tricks that I use is I just kinda of put it where it used to be. If you, if you slide the bearing around the axle till you see where the set screws used to be, put them in the same spot. That way you're not marring up the axle in different locations. Uh, if it's a different one, then don't worry about it. Just make sure that both ends are the same distance and the axle is center in the go-kart. Okay, so you wanna use your parts wash to clean the threads of your bearings before you put the set screws in and also clean the set screws so that there's no grease or WD-40 or anything on there so that when the metal tightens against itself, it doesn't back out easily. After everything's clean, then we're gonna go ahead and do a drop of Loctite on the set screws. Some people don't like using it, but I've had them back out enough times throughout the years that it just makes it easier to do it. So just drop some a dab of blue Loctite, not the red or the green, because that is just way too strong. So you wanna drop a dab of the blue Loctite and then tighten it down. When you tighten down the, the set screws, I like to do it three times. I like to tighten it, loosen it, tighten it, loosen it, and then tighten it up again. That way, the set screw actually digs into the axle and kind of holds itself in there and it really has a good grip on the axle so it doesn't slide around while driving. After the set screws are in, then it's time to center up the brake rotor. 
Center up the brake rotor in between the pads and then go ahead and tighten that down. Make sure you tighten up the bolts on the brake hub as well. And then use your parts wash to clean the, all the WD-40 off the brake rotor so that you don't go onto the track and have yourself a, a, a nice little slippery issue. That's a, that, that's a big no-no. That would not be fun. After you have the brake hub in and the axle in, then it's time to put on the sprocket hub. Put on the sprocket hub and the sprocket, line it up. You can use a laser liner or a, even a straight edge if you want. But we go ahead and make sure that that sprocket is lined up so that you have the proper wear. Okay, after you put the sprocket hub on, go ahead and put the keys and the rear hub on, set your rear width, tighten everything down, then throw your wheels on. After you have everything done and ready to go, there's one more step, and that's just to give it a quick run, fire up the engine, and just put a little heat cycle through the brakes. That way it's gonna burn off any oil or WD-40 or anything that had kinda gotten on there, and then you're gonna be ready to go on track. So remember, the biggest thing is to clean the axle. You clean the axle, it's gonna make it for a better time. Clean the axle, it's gonna be a good time. If you have the axle clean every time you take it out, and you clean the axle every time you put it in, it's gonna slide through a lot better. You're not gonna damage the axle and it's gonna be a lot easier to remove it. And the time it's really gonna matter is when you have to make an axle change really fast. All right, well, thanks for watching. Go ahead and hit that like button down below if you like this video. Hit the subscribe button so that you can be notified when we have more content coming out and we'll see you at the track.